Good morning, one and all. I'll be back in the man cave tomorrow, so you won't have to put up with me sat in front of me beach towel. That's not me beach towel. Yeah, you wouldn't want to dry yourself. It's no towel into it at all. In fact, it's highly synthetic and it would probably chafe quite a lot if you tried to dry yourself vigorously with that in um, moist areas. Well, I don't know where I'm going with this. I'll, I'll move on to the next bit. We've got a few things to discuss today that have nothing to do with redrying your privates. Um, we've got some transfer tittle tattle. We've got your, your daily Jesse Lingard. Let's be fair, a morning video wouldn't be a morning video unless we discussed a bit of Jesse Lingard and all the rumours associated with him. And you saw me sort of um, uh, desperately uh, trying to think of some unsubstantiated reason why we might keep him or why he would choose to stay with West Ham above uh, Real Madrid. I will try and justify that to you. And we've also got some injury news, good and bad. Um, or maybe it's just bad and bad, depends how you look at it. But there's a couple of bits of injury news. The first of which is that Manuel Lanzini is back training. I do love this saying they've got now. I don't, I, it seems new to me. I, it's not like I've gone through my whole uh, life supporting football and reading West Ham news and hearing this saying, but it seems a modern phrase. I, th I think it was David Moyes maybe who introduced it. He's on the grass, is what they say. He's, he's <laughs> well, they say he's training on the grass, but then they've sort of, in their vernacular, they've sort of abbreviated it to say he's on the grass, which means something very, very different uh, as far as I'm concerned. And we've got, we've got to watch out. Look, we've got enough players out at the moment as it is without players doing that sort of thing. But anyway, um, Lanzini's back on... The, the training turf, let's put it that way. And apparently, he may well be able to take part in, in the squad for the next game against Newcastle, which is early kickoff Saturday, if I remember rightly, 12.30. It's make a change for us to kick off before everybody else, won't it? That'll be when we muck it up, of course. Um, but it'd be really good to have him back involved because I know he's not been a mainstay of the team or of the squad. However, he's... He, play, he can play in midfield and he's busy and he's energetic in midfield and it does give us some options. Is he a box-to-box -box midfielder or a ball winner in the type of Declan Rice or Suchek or Mark Noble or whatever? No, he's not. But it is another, <laughs> it's another number. And it's got to be better than trying to shoehorn Ben Johnson into playing central midfield because Ben Johnson is going to be needed somewhere else. And that's at left back. I'd imagine. I mean, this is interesting. I wonder what Moyes would do. I mean, he's either going to switch to 4-4-2. And this is interesting because it's Newcastle. Or not 4-4-2, whatever. 4-3-2-1, whatever, whatever he does, right? Or he's going to stay with three centre-halves and wing-backs, five at the back. If he does that, then I guess Johnson doesn't get in the team. He keeps Masawaku left back and he just brings a centre back back in. Ogbonna or hopefully, fingers crossed, we, we, need, we need this. We discussed this in the last couple of videos, of course. Um... I do think if we go to um, 4 4 2, then Johnson comes in. It's going to be really interesting to see what he does. If I had to, obviously we'll cover this in the preview, myself and Gio, but if I had to nail my colours to the mast, I think he'll stay with three at the back. Um, but we're going to be less creative because of the loss of Cresswell. Now, here's the news the, the first injury news. Actually, no, this is the second injury news. The first injury news was Lanzini. This is the second part of the injury news is Cresswell is out for three weeks. I mean, it ain't great, is it? Um, he misses Chelsea, in essence, as well. So um, it's not as bad as first thought, but I mean, it's not like three weeks at the start of the season, is it? This is three, <laughs> it's th three games when you've got seven games left ain't great. You know, it's, it's still almost half the game. So um, it ain't great. They're dropping like flies, a lot of our players. We can't afford any more. I'm not sure we can afford what we've had already. But we do have a whole week to train for it and to put into place a plan which hopefully can um, can do, you know, can circumvent the problems. Uh, the other rumour, say the other rumour, there is a rumour, ex-West Ham United employee has said that John McGinn, West Ham retained an interest in John McGinn. Now, according to X, what has happened before was when Moyes was at the club the first time around, he, um, he was interested in McGinn. I remember this actually. So I remember myself and Gio did a video about it. Mm, okay, yeah, that, that is, I, I, rem I remember that rumor. It hadn't occurred to me um, until that point. Now, I can imagine he is, I can imagine he would be attracted um, 
I say more, he's more as would be attracted to McGinn, not in that way, of course. But, you know, in terms of signing him as a player, I can understand that. Yeah, absolutely. They paid three and a half odd million for him, but I reckon his price now is 25 million. You forget it. I don't think we're just not going to buy. I mean, we're not buying anyone for that money. I think we'd buy a forward for that money. And I think we'd buy Jesse Lingard for that money, but not buying an additional player on top for that money. We ain't spending 75 million this season, put it that way, um, at the end of the season. You know what I mean, the transfer window. So I, I can't see it. Would, do I want him? Yeah, I think it'd be a, a nice addition. Uh, do we... Do I think we'll get him? No, I don't. But it, look, it's it's an it's an interesting rumor. I can't see how they do it. Now, this is this is a big one, right? This is a big one. It's about Jesse Lingard, and apparently, <laughs> and we've got to discuss it because it's in the news. Paris Saint Germain, Inter Milan, and Real Madrid are all interested in signing Jesse Lingard. I mean. I'm surprised the Harlem Globetrotters aren't interested in him. Why does he sign for Brazil as well while we're at it? I, I've, I've not seen Barcelona chucked in there yet, but I'm sure they will be. Um, it's, not, it's not that I disbelieve that they that those clubs would have looked at him and thought, oh, OK, this, this is a player that might be of some benefit. But let's just, uh, let's just break it out. I can't speak for Inter Milan. I don't. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't, I probably can't speak for Real Madrid uh, or Paris Saint-Germain either. But Inter Milan, I'm not so sure. I'm not that up on the composition that it's seen. But if you look at somebody like Real Madrid, OK, I just... Jesse going to Real Madrid, for me, and I this is me trying to convince myself as much as anything that the transfer can't happen and won't happen. Number one, I know he wanted to stay in the UK. I think he was... Um, you know, he's spoken openly about, about his mother and, and how he's had to look after his family. He's not going to want to move to Spain, is he? I just can't see that happening at all. Um, also, we know that Jesse Lingard wanted out of Man United because he wanted to play football. Now, if he goes to Real Madrid, I'm not saying he won't play any football, but they've got some big, massive players over there. They've got Gareth Bale going back at the end of this season. He's letting me know he doesn't want to stay at Tottenham, um, which is a bit of a PR uh, disaster for them. Well, I'm going back to Real Madrid, he said. They signed Eden Hazard last year, didn't they? Um, I don't think he's, he's done particularly well out there. They've got uh, some really good players coming through. They've got uh, Vicindus Jr., I think his name is. Uh, really, anyway, it's, got, it's Real Madrid. They've got lots of... Lots of very good players. Asensio, that's another one, isn't it? Good. They've got good players over there. Jesse Lingard. Is, is Jesse Lingard going to be significantly better than any of those? Is he going to basically claim that place in the team? And the same would go for Paris Saint-Germain. He's not going to go there and be the main man. So he finds himself in a similar situation. I said yesterday that I thought he'd played himself into Gareth Southgate's plans. I, I really did. Not only South, Gareth Southgate's plans, into his squad. I think he's in. I really do. Barring an injury, and you can't roll that out at West Ham. I do think he's in the squad. Now, has it, so it, it becomes to the comes to the question: How much has he enjoyed being at West Ham? Now, Champions League, we sign him. I don't think there's any doubt about that at all. Europa, yes, I think we stand a good chance. I really do, because I think. It brings something else into play. He's not just going to want to feature for England in the European Championships. There's World Cup qualification coming up. He's going to want to play in the World Cup again. He'll have had a taste of it. He'll want to do so again. Um, I think he will have thoroughly enjoyed being the main man at West Ham. And it's not like he's... You know, look, Ogbonna's the main man. Declan Rice is the main man. Um, Mikel Antonio's the main man. But, but positionally, in the attacking midfield element, position, whatever you want to call it. He's the main guy. He's the go-to guy. And I think he'll have enjoyed the kudos of it. And I also think, unfortunately for us and, and for him, he's not been able to sample the adulation of the fans yet. Because the fans would have absolutely loved him. He'd have had a song already. Um... I, I, I actually, I'm not, I, I, who knows, who knows, maybe someone will pop one underneath. In fact, talking about the comments underneath, put your comments underneath regarding any of today's issues and we'll discuss your comments tomorrow for tomorrow's video. Um, I, I just think it's got to appeal, playing every game, having such a responsibility on you and having a manager who has massive faith in you, the adulation of fans, the adulation of your, um, of your players, of your teammates has got to be 
something. For years, he's probably just been another player, a squad player at Manchester United rather than the superstar. I think it's his time for the limelight. I think he's enjoying it. And here's, a, here's something. If Jesse Lingard had have been at West Ham all this season, all season long, Jesse Lingard may well have won PFA Player of the Year. I'm serious. I am serious. He would have been in, he would have been in the final shake-up. He really would. You, you can't tell me otherwise, right? Well, you can, but I, I, so I, <laughs> that would be your opinion. My opinion is PFA Player of the Year. If he'd have been at Man United instead of Man United, he wouldn't have been. He wouldn't have been in the shake-up for it. He's got a chance of European football, and he's got a chance of individual accolades, really. Basically, he's being talked about. He's being highly regarded. He's the talk of the town, uh, every town, in fact. He's the talk of the Premier League at the moment. And I just hope... Every, everyone's got an ego, right? Everyone's got an ego. So you hope from an ego point of view, it suits him. You hope, because he's not played that much football in his career, playing regularly suits him. He's at the peak of his powers. And probably at West Ham, he probably knows that he will play every game, every week. And because of that, he can actually try and cement his reputation as one of the best players in the Premier League. He doesn't have to look at Kevin De Bruyne and as, as somebody that's not his equal. He can look at someone like that and think, you know what? I can do that. And whatever, Mo Salah or whoever it may be, a superstar at all, at all the relevant clubs, at all the big clubs, he can, he's already, we've already shown at West Ham he can achieve that sort of thing. That's my reasoning, as I say. I, it's maybe a bit unsubstantiated, but I hope, <laughs> I hope that, um, that he does turn down all these other clubs, if half of them are interested. I do think half it's paper talk. But wouldn't it really be something? Wouldn't it be really be something for West Ham if we could get a superstar player, an international player, one of the best players in the Premier League, to turn down Manchester United, Paris Saint-Germain and Real Madrid to stay at Little Old West Ham. <laughs>